Welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Um, and Madge the Cat's also making an appearance too. She's just keeping an eye on things. Now, on this day in Tudor history, the 17th of March, 1565, Scottish theologian and reformer Alexander Eliseus, also known as Aless, um, Ailes, all sorts of uh, variations on his name, died in either Leipzig or Edinburgh. The sources differ as to the place of his death. Eliseus was born as Alexander Allen or Elaine in Edinburgh, Scotland on the 23rd of April 1500 and he was educated at the University of St Andrews graduating BA from St Leonard's College. In 1532 Eliseus enrolled at Wittenberg University and it was there that he became friends with theologian Philip Melanchthon and began to be concerned with making the Bible available in the vernacular. He published an open letter to King James V of Scotland in 1533, appealing for him to annul recent legislation, making it illegal to own or distribute the New Testament in the vernacular, the common tongue. When the Catholic Johannes Cochleus countered this with a letter to James accusing Eliseus of translating the New Testament and sending it to Scotland and claiming that it would cause unrest, Eliseus answered with a further letter, emphasising how continental reformers were simply trying to lead people back to the Bible and to the teaching of the early church. In August 1535, Eliseus travelled to England with copies of Lockie Communes by Melanchthon for King Henry VIII and Thomas Cromwell. And when he travelled there again in October, he was appointed King's Scholar at Cambridge University. But spring 1536 was a time of worry for Eliseus, with the fall of Queen Anne Boleyn, a keen reformer. And resistance to reformist ideas, coupled with the fact that Cromwell hadn't paid his stipend, forced him to leave the university and to train as a physician in London. This did enable Eliseus, though, to keep in contact with his good friends, such as Archbishop Thomas Cranmer, and contacts like Thomas Cromwell, who was Henry VIII's vicar general. In the early hours of the 19th of May, 1536, the day of Queen Anne Boleyn's execution, Eliseus had a terrible vision or nightmare. He was in London at the time, and although he was aware of the Queen's imprisonment at the Tower of London, he didn't know that she was due to be executed that day. Having, in his own words, remained a sorrowful man at home, worrying about what would happen to England's religion if the Queen was put to death. He gives an account of this vision or nightmare in a letter that he wrote to Anne Boleyn's daughter, Queen Elizabeth I, in 1559, when he was congratulating her on her accession to the throne. He wrote, I take to witness Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, that I am about to speak the truth. On the day upon which the Queen was beheaded, at sunrise, between two and three o'clock, there was revealed to me, whether I was asleep or awake, I know not, the Queen's neck after her head had been cut off, and this so plainly that I could count the nerves, the veins and the arteries. Terrified by this dream or vision, I immediately arose, and crossing the River Thames, I came to Lambeth. This is the name of the Archbishop of Canterbury's palace. And I entered the garden in which he was walking. When the Archbishop saw me, he inquired why I'd come so early, for the clock had not yet struck four. I answered that I had been horrified in my sleep, and I told him the whole occurrence. He continued in silent wonder for a while, and at length broke out into these words. Do not you know what is to happen today? And when I answered that I had remained at home since the date of the Queen's imprisonment and knew nothing of what was going on, the Archbishop then raised his eyes to heaven and said, She who has been the Queen of England upon earth will today become a Queen in heaven. So great was his grief that he could say nothing more, and then he burst into tears. That must have been a sad day for those two men who of course supported Queen Anne Boleyn and her faith. 
In summer 1537, Eliseus was involved in a public row with John Stokesley, Bishop of London, who protested against the view that Eliseus put forward as King's scholar regarding there being only two sacraments. This debate was published by Eliseus in 1542. Eliseus left England suddenly in June 1539 after being warned by Archbishop Cramner of the dangers of being a married reformer when the Act of Six Articles was about to be made law. This act demanded a vow of celibacy, but Eliseus was married. He travelled back to Wittenberg and then became a professor of theology at Frankfurt and der Oder. After trouble there in 1542, he was forced to leave and take up a position at Leipzig. There, in 1547, during the siege of Leipzig, his house and library were destroyed, but it was the place where Eliseus chose to end his days, visiting England during King Edward VI's reign and translating for Cramner Latin versions of the Order of Communion and the First Prayer Book. He died on this day in 1565 and was survived by his wife Catherine and two sons and two daughters. During his lifetime, he wrote a number of theological works, and I'll give you a link to a list of them. It is huge. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 17th of March 1554, Princess Elizabeth, the future Queen Elizabeth I, stalled her arrest by writing her famous Tide Letter. And you can find out more about what happened and the letter in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. Now you can subscribe by clicking round about here and actually Madge is saying, look, I'm right next to it, please subscribe. So there you go, Madge, you tell them to subscribe to this channel. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can, of course, give me a like, a special like for the cat cameo, obviously, and leave a comment. I'll be back tomorrow, bye-bye.